Dudes. Dudes. I'm Harry. What's your name? I'm Andy. Like Andy from Fallout Boy? Yep. That's the one. Andy from Fallout Boy doesn't wear shirts. But he does for special occasions. Oh, dude. It's true. Holy dude of dudes. It's Andy from Fallout Boy. Let's do this. Let's do this. Some of the most masterful drummers I meet, I get the sense that after a certain threshold of success, it's just no longer interesting to think about the drums anymore. But my sense from talking to you is like you still like to think about the drums and... Yeah, I'm not... I met Tomas Hockey, uh, ha the sugar. sugar drummer. Yeah. And I asked him what he does to warm up or like practice at home and he said nothing. He doesn't practice. And that's kind of where I'm at. Okay. I just cruise. Yeah. I feel like I got to a place where I can play like all the styles that I want and I'm cool with it. But uh, yeah, I still nerd out about stuff. I'm a DW drummer now. Mm -hmm. um, and I just saw that they posted a picture of their bell brass, which is, you know, the, the classic DW snare, which yeah. I don't have one. So I, I, t I took a screenshot so I can send it to my guy and order one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I still nerd out. Okay. I think, it, I think that kind of goes with everything else. I kind of shift in focus where I just want to play and do bands and practice and make music and stuff. I dig that. Well, that inspires me. I mean, after the years and years of success that you've had, that you still are stimulated by it in that way. Yeah. That's also good news because this is a drum channel, so uh, yeah, sure. I don't have anything else to get heady with you about. Uh, that being said, man, brought this game if you want to get into it, man. All it takes is you putting on these Vic Firth headphones yep. and listening, and uh, okay. we're gonna do some drum shit. Man, I'm so out bearded in here. <laughs> Look at you, point the camera at you, TJ. Even my camera guy. That's a real good beard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm in dead last place in the beard test, including the, <laughs> the security lady that let us in here. Cool. Dude, so uh, this is a game entitled Dude, Drum Stuff, We Like It, Dude. Here's how it works, man. I have iconic drum intros from over the decades of rock and roll, okay? Yep. And if you can name the tune just by hearing the drums alone, then you win I'm a prize. Sure, hopefully. <laughs> Why that? I mean, that, that one's it. <laughs> it says it. We start slow. All right. Dude, you nailed that one. We're gonna go deeper. We're, go, <laughs> we're going to the 70s. I didn't expect the f***ing, the guy to say wipe out over it. <laughs> wipe Damn it. I would have gotten it just from the laugh, even if he didn't say it. Yeah? Was, ah. That's deep drum knowledge. All right, we're taking it to the 70s, man. Okay. Yep, it's that one. Dude. Yeah, man. All right, we're going to the 80s. Okay. Uh, Van Halen. Dig. We're going to the 90s. You're on a roll, man. All right. Uh, uh, Foo Fighters. Oh, dig, dig, man. That's four in a row, man. We only have one historic decade <laughs> left. You're one away. All right. Are you ready? I am ready. This is it. 2000s. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm honored that uh, I have one in there. Yeah? Yeah. Is that to say that's you on drums? Yeah. This her. Invented that <laughs> shit. Congrats, by the way. I know I'm 12 years late telling you that, but that's like a pretty big feat, that tune. Thank you. Thank you, man. <laughs> when you think back to tracking a song with a drum intro all the way to that going like quadruple platinum in an era where music sales don't exist, is there a defined moment in the lineage of that song where you realized, dude, I just created a moment in the history of music? Mm. No, I don't. I don't think of it that way, I guess. I don't know, it's kind of surreal for it to be framed that way. It's kind of weird. Was there even a moment where it set in, it's like, oh damn, maybe this is not just another song? Yeah, I guess there was moments like that. I certainly don't think that's because of the drum intro. I'm just stoked that it's there, <laughs> but. I mean, I do remember in the studio, it kind of, the chorus really came together with Patrick. And I remember him being like, this is gonna put our kids through college or something. And he's not like a braggadocious guy. Yeah. He was kind of joking. Yeah, I yeah. think he was just really stoked at what he came up with. And I went into the, to hear it, into the booth and I was like, damn, this is good. 
But I mean, you never know how that will translate. For sure, and it man. ended up working, I guess. Yeah. Man, if nothing else, it seems like, I mean, I know being at a place like Toyota Center, playing these rooms is, I guess, business as usual for you now. But maybe that song comes out 12 years ago and overnight you're doing these 20,000 seater rooms. Are there things you know now about what these rooms require of you that you wish you'd known then? Yeah, I guess, just confidence. I think then it's so big. Now we played uh, an arena, like a college arena in Fairfax maybe. And I was like, man, this show is small. <laughs> so it's kind of weird <laughs> when you get used to it. That's not to say that every night I'm not like looking out in disbelief. I remember when we came back from hiatus and we did an arena tour and I was just like, dude, I can't believe we're doing this again. Like this is crazy. And I, I do feel that almost every night where I'll look out and just be like, see people, you know, in the nosebleeds and just be like, this is crazy. The difference being is the confidence. I think back then I couldn't look up there without like seizing up and playing like really tight and messing up. Now I, this tour has been like the lo loosest I've ever played. Cause I, I'll see pictures where it's just like this and I'm like, damn, like, yeah. Loosen up a little bit. Dude, so you mean literally loose, like oh, don't choke yeah. the hell out of the stick. I hope that I can absorb that lesson from you right now, man. I, I get what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, it still creeps up, but there'll be times where I'll feel it and I'll be like, stop, just loosen up. I have some nights where it's like, I don't know if I know how to play or like, you know, we play to a click and sometimes I'm like, I don't, rhythm escapes me. I don't know what, like, and it'll be like really weird, like a song I've played more than any other song. And I'll just be like, I'll mess up something. I'll be like, what? What is happening? <laughs> like, <laughs> this is so easy. But then like, you know, harder fills, mm -hmm. fine. Damn. It's weird like that. So you're saying it's psychological? Yeah. Dig. But when I mess up a little thing, I tighten up. And that's the opposite of what you should do. Yeah. The looser you are, the, the more confidence your body is telling your brain you have, you know what I mean? Damn dude, that's a life lesson. That's not just a drum lesson. You clear these headphones off the screen. The Vic Firth headphones. That's a good game though. Oh, thanks man, love, you, you really nailed it. I love it. those kind of things. You know what, can I say something? Andy and I don't agree on much, okay? As, as you can tell from this interview, he prefers to be in a mega popular rock band and play huge shows all over the world. And I prefer to toil in obscurity <laughs> for a lot less money, probably. But the one thing we do agree on is this. Andy, who is your chosen source of drumstick? Vic Firth. Dig it, man. Yeah, the best. Always has been. I too am a Vic Firth lifer, man. I'm thankful for my Vic Firth brotherhood with you and also just Vic in general has facilitated a lot of the joyful noise in my life from my own drumming to a big old stack of Fallout Boy records that I've loved for a, the better part of two decades now, so dig them. You win the prize, by the way. First of all. Oh, I saw. Yeah. It's been probably been a while since you looked at this thing, yeah. eh? So for my faithful YouTubers, one lucky subscriber is gonna get this from me in the mail. Just leave a comment. Tell us your favorite Andy Hurley drumming moment. Hell, maybe he'll even sign it. I have not asked his permission. I will, yeah. Oh, dig. Absolutely. So now we're in the 20 teens, man. A decade in which I dare say the iconic drum intro slot is yet unclaimed. Yeah. Is it on Mania? Let me think. Mm, no, I don't think so. I should go back and see if I can add that. It would. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too late, man. To add January. Yeah. What can you tell me from a drumming perspective about the new stuff, man? I feel like it's the most drumming that I've done on the modern era since coming back from a hiatus. Because a lot of the writing now is more pop. I mean, working with Butch Walker, who's amazing and kind of is one of the best at balancing the line between modern pop production and old school production. Pretty much all the songs that have been singles have had like real drums in it, just mixed weirdly. But then there's been some stuff that were a lot more pop and like I'm less in it. Like I record stuff to everything. They usually always keep my fills, which is great. I guess that's <laughs> really all I care about. Yeah. But this record, we did a few songs with Dave Sardi, who's a total old school production guy where, you know, setting up the mics takes a day, you know, just takes upon takes upon takes. The modern, style being kind of just doing it a couple times and they'll, I mean,
pop production now, you're kind of messing with things anyway. Mm -hmm. Like Young and Menace is pretty much entirely real instruments, just phased or messed with to sound fake. You know what I mean? Definitely. Which is, I, I like that. It's, it seems futuristic from the way things used to be and it's exciting, it's cool. I feel like this record is one of the best balances of all that stuff. It has, you know, pop your stuff. It has total rock drums still and stuff. So it, it's great, I love it. A hallmark of every Fall Out Boy recording I've ever heard is the drum parts are always so perfectly tailored to the song itself. Would you say that those things are a reflection of, say, your Neil Avron or Dave, who you just mentioned, or is it more about interfacing with Patrick's drum knowledge, or are you just your own sovereign nation? I think everybody. I think Patrick's the biggest reason, at least initially, because especially early on, I would want to do fills all over, or like, or, you know, patterns on the kick, but he has like vocal patterns that need to be matched. But I think now I hear this stuff more. I just hear what he's doing. I hear like the bass line. So I know, you know, what I have to do to kind of st stay in, in the pocket or stay in the lane with what the track wants. Yeah, dude. Needs, you know? You're growing up, man. Yeah. I noticed with Neil Avram, for example, that so many of my favorite rhythm tracks end up being productions of his. Really? By end. Yeah. So it made me wonder if he has some kind of affinity for drums. Yeah, I feel like he does. I mean, when we were recording with him, drums, I think, got the most attention. Even if I felt like that was it, that was the take. Okay, do it again. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You know, it'd just be, take upon take so he could make sure to get the best sounding takes, the best, you know, rhythmic sensibility for take. So I feel like that he's got that. Neil's great, he's awesome. In that case, considering all that entire sonic landscape that you just talked about, all this take this to your grave stuff that's real crash toms, kicks, all the way to these electronic things you're describing now, what kind of changes have you had to make on your drum riser to reflect all that? The live interpretations, I think, are still very acoustic drum based, but I, I do have a Roland SPDX or whatever pad right that I have that we plug some of the different electronic sounds into, or like 808 that I, you just can't get. Yeah. So stuff like that. Well, whatever you got up there, man. I'm looking forward to you melting my face off with it tonight. I'll be up in the nosebleeds just double fisting <laughs> the horns of rock. Will you send us off ceremoniously? This is yeah. a tradition on my channel with a, a ceremonial striking of the cowbell. All right. Dudes, what a tubular time. Thanks for digging it. Remember, I've got some totally sweet, not available in stores Andy sticks to send to a few of you, so just do what we talked about earlier. And the rest of you, as usual, just leave your normal internet trolly comments that make me laugh. Troll. And for all my dudes who've yet to be blessed by the rockings of Gnarly Hurley, I'll leave you with my personal favorite Fallout Boy drumming moment from their sentimental tune entitled, Snitches and Talkers Get Stitches and Walkers. Later, dudes.